Hello, welcome to Jason the Old Millennial. My name is Jason, speaking to you here in my basement in the great state of Kansas. In today's video, I'm going through nine different questions about the movies of this current year, as we're about half, we're past halfway through this year. And these are questions that I got off of another channel called I'll Buy the Popcorn. Uh, and the uh, person that does that is named Stephanie. And so she did this video I saw today where she had these nine questions that she answered and then she wanted to, she tagged other people and wanted them to answer the questions. Uh, she didn't tag me, but I thought it'd be a fun nine questions to go through about movies this year and kind of give my thoughts. So that's what we're gonna do here on Jason, the old millennial. Hello, I hope everybody's doing well here on a Monday uh, afternoon. Um, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I'm pretty um, excited, anticipating this week because I am going to be traveling to Europe starting Wednesday and I'll be gone for 17 days. So you're not going to see any of these traditional videos that I do or live streams uh, for two and a half weeks. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to post some videos of my European trip as we're traveling maybe to show you what I'm doing and to put something out on my channel. But yeah, so very excited to be traveling to Europe again. I always love traveling to Europe. My favorite place to go to. Uh, so many cool things to see. So uh, yeah, I'll be talking about that a lot in the next couple of weeks, of course, on the channel. But um, in this video, um, I was watching uh, Stephanie's from I'll Buy the Popcorn video, and she had these nine questions kind of she answered, and I thought it'd be nice to go over these questions and it kind of gives my thoughts on the year, uh, my thoughts on this year in movies, basically. Um, so, and I'll put these in the description and put Stephanie's uh, uh, channel in descriptions. And I guess I'm supposed to tag some other people that I want to also answer this <laughs> question. So I'll put them in the description as well. So first question is, what is your most disappointing movie so far this year? And mine's gonna be very surprising because this is a lot of people's favorite action movie of the year. And people, one of the people's favorite, a lot of people's favorite movies of the year. And I was really disappointed with this one. That is John Wick Chapter 4. And you know that's going to be a surprise because I'm a huge fan of the John Wick uh, franchise or trilogy as it was before this movie. Um, in fact, I'll go down and say it's the best action franchise of all time because uh, those first three movies are absolutely fantastic. Um, John Wick Chapter 2, I would say, is my favorite action movie of all time. I mean, the action is just absolutely incredible. It's like a perfect action movie to me. But yeah, all three just are absolutely incredible movies. And so I was, this was my own most anticipated movie of the year. And I talked a lot about this movie. And I was like, on day one, I'm going to be in the theater. I only, I've only seen three movies in the theater this year. And this was the first one that I saw. Uh, I don't like to go to the theater all that often. So I'm only going to go if I really think it's going to be a good movie. So obviously if I go, I'm anticipating it. And if it doesn't, you know, there's a lot of hype around this movie and that's the problem because the first three are so good that I expected this to be as good as the other three and to go to it and just feel very like let down by this movie that I didn't like the way it was going. Uh, I really think they should have ended the series in uh, chapter three. I think it would have been a perfect trilogy if they could have come with some kind of interesting ending. Uh, but instead they elongated to a fourth movie, which this movie was really like two movies in one because it's almost three hours long. It's like two hours and 50 minutes long or something like that. If I remember right, 2.45. It was an incredibly long movie and it could have really been cut it down to at least 2.15 or two hours. And, uh, you know, or try to split this up into, I thought they're going to do fourth and a fifth movie. But sometime down the line, they must have decided to just make one more movie, a fourth movie. So they took all their ideas and put it in one movie. And that's why it's so long. And I think that really hurts the movie. It's just way too long. Um, it just feels very repetitive of the other movies. It didn't feel like it was bringing too much new material here. Um, the bad guy seems like the same bad guy from Chapter 2. And there's characters from the other movies that they didn't bring back. And then they introduced some new characters that I didn't care that much for. The tracker seemed like a very unnecessary character that did nothing for me uh, throughout the movie. I didn't, really didn't understand any motivation that he had. Um, we bring in this uh, blind assassin by Donnie Yen, which I love Donnie Yen. So I was like, cool, Donnie Yen. We're going to have some cool moments with Donnie Yen. 
But just as I was watching the movie, I was like, this is the stupidest idea I've ever heard in my life. A, a guy who's blind, who's going to be a great shot, and he's going to be great at sword fighting. It's like, no, you can't do that if you're blind. There's no way you're going to be good at shooting a gun accurately or fighting with a sword. It's just a really stupid idea. And also, um, just the, the amount of punishment John Wick goes through and gets back up was too much to believe at this point. There's some unbelievable moments in the other three movies, but I still was able to kind of be okay with it. Uh, though the third movie does have some moments that I really don't like. Um, this movie just was filled with so many unrealistic ideas or, or, or situations like uh, John Wick getting hit by a car three different times. And he does get hit by cars in other movies but maybe just once, but this time he gets hit three times. So I'm like, okay, once I maybe can go, okay, he'll get back up. After three times, I'm like, oh, come on, what are we doing here? Uh, it's too unrealistic. He also falls down, I say three times, maybe five times. I think he gets hit by like maybe five cars or something. Uh, he falls down buildings or very high places about three different times where that, that fall should kill you. Plus he falls down a hundred steps and gets up and that should kill you. So the amount of falling he does, the amount of time he gets hit by cars, he should be dead. And so it was just a little too, getting getting past the point that I can, you know, believe and be uh, not bothered by. So because of that, John Wick Chapter 4, very disappointing. I thought the weakest movie in the series. And yeah, it was too bad. Okay, second question is, what is the worst movie that you've seen this year? And uh, it was going to be Peter Pan and Wendy. That was a really bad movie. It's a Disney Plus movie really bad adaptation of uh, the Peter Pan story and really bad casting and all that. But I saw a movie just yesterday, I was watching a movie and it was definitely the worst movie and that is Asteroid City by Wes Anderson. And I, Wes Anderson's a hit or miss director for me. I, I do like some of his quirky type of filmmaking and his uh, sense of style, sense of set direction, uh, costuming, the color schemes he uses is very interesting. The dialogue is very interesting at times. You know, um, if he's making a good movie, um, you can really look at it and go, wow, I love all these elements. If he's making a really bad movie, you can take the same elements, you go, wow, I really hate all these elements. And this is one where I absolutely hated everything about this movie. Um, like I said, there's some great movies out there like Moonrise Kingdom, Grand Buddha's Pest Hotel, The World of Tenenbaums, um, the Fantastic Mr. Fox. His style works really well in those movies. But then there's movies like I Don't Like Rushmore, or Life Aquatic with Steve Zazu. And the worst movie I've seen so far of his was The French Dispatch, which came out like a year ago, his last movie he made. I remember seeing that and just going, oh my gosh, this is uh, terrible. Like his quirkiness was too quirky and the story just suffered from the quirkiness of his storytelling and his dialogue. And it was just a mess of a movie. And I thought, oh, man, it's too bad because he came off with two really good movies, Moonrise Kingdom um, and uh, The Grand Poodle's Best Hotel. I mean, two of his best movies, in my opinion. And so I was really high on him after Grand Budapest Hotel, but then he does the French Dispatch, and I think, oh man, this is a really step back from what he was doing. And then I watch Asteroid City, and this is a really huge step back. This is definitely the worst Wes Anderson movie that he's made. And uh, it's, yeah, it's definitely the worst movie. Even Peter Pan and Wendy was terrible, but yet there was a couple maybe entertaining moments. Asteroid City has not one entertaining moment in it. It is a boring movie and it makes absolutely no sense. I don't, from five minutes into the movie, I was like, I do not understand what's going on in this movie. And I was that way for the rest of the movie as stuff kept shooting back between this black and white scene to this very colorful scene in a different area. And I didn't understand the going back and forth between these people doing a stage play in black and white. And then we're in this uh, city called Asteroid City out in the desert and it just, I didn't, I, it probably is supposed to make sense, but I just could not make sense of what was going on. And the dialogue is the usual quirky dialogue, but it wasn't funny at all. I never laughed once. I uh, never cared for any of the characters. And uh, I was just totally just bored with the story and confused. And uh, it was just a real pain to, to watch this movie. And there's a part with an alien, just a, not to spoil too much, but there's like this whole, that's what I understood going into the movie. So this was at least spoiled to me before I even watched it. But there's something to do with an alien and an alien does show up, but it was a really weird sequence. And the ending just, 
doesn't have any satisfaction to it. And yeah, it was just a, yeah, it was just a really horrible movie. One of the worst I've seen lately. Uh, definitely the worst of this year, Asteroid City. I, I can't recommend that much. And I don't know what's going on with Sanderson. I went from being really high on him to now I'm like, I think this guy's a terrible director and terrible screenwriter. And and so the next movie he makes, I'm not going to rush out to see it. I, I might I might see it. Like I saw this movie. I only watched Asteroid City because I'm a fan of Moonrise Kingdom and the Grand Budapest Hotel. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to give this guy a shot because he made some good movies. Now he's made two really terrible movies in a row. Now I'm like, I don't think I want to watch another Wes Anderson movie. Maybe he's out of ideas. All his good ideas are already out there and he just can't make a good movie anymore. Who knows? But yeah, what that's a disappointment too. But yeah, it's definitely the worst one. All right, number three, funniest slash ridiculous movie of the year. And that's a movie that, I don't know, I haven't heard anybody, haven't heard anybody talk about. It. It's a very small movie, I guess, and it's called Quasi which is short for Quasimodo, as it's kind of this almost spoof film of um, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, in a sense. It's not the story of Hunchback of Notre Dame. It's like, this is like a spoof of like, maybe what happens after the events of Hunchback of Notre Dame. And it's almost an alternative history or alternative universe of what if Quasimodo, uh, in this story, Quasimodo, uh, works for the king as a dungeon torturer and that's kind of the basis of his character and so it's not really based anything on the previous uh story but it's the same character quasimodo um in a sense though it's very like low budget quasimodo uh but it's the guys called the broken lizard Cl uh, club i believe they're called and they've done a, they do a lot of out there comedies like the big one super troopers was a huge hit back in the early 2000s i think um but they've done stuff like uh was it club dead or something uh, beer fest i mean a lot of movies aren't great uh except for maybe super troopers it's pretty good comedy and but you know it was one of those things where i was like eh, i'll check it out i don't know if it's on any kind of streaming i saw it like on video on demand and just as a on a whim and i actually find myself really laughing at this movie and I thought it was actually pretty funny. It's definitely very raunchy type uh, R-rated comedy, uh, which I don't typically like, but yeah, it's something about the story. I actually kind of enjoyed it and it's stupid. It's one of those movies, it's like, it's a stupid comedy, but I don't know, I had fun with it. Maybe I was in the right mood when I watched it, but I, I quite I quite um, recommend the movie, uh, Quasi. Uh, yeah, it's a stupid comedy, but it worked. All right, number four, most surprising movie, which is kind of a hard one to go. I guess that means a movie I wasn't expecting to be that good, but I kind of enjoyed it more than I expected. And so I'm going to go with a movie I just saw yesterday, actually. I just watched this, and it is Renfield. Um, I actually saw that the other day, and I found myself liking this movie way more. I thought it looked really stupid when I saw the trailer. In fact, I remember when this movie was coming out, I think my, my, my feelings were that I didn't really care to see this movie. The trailer looked really stupid and I didn't get, it's, you know, it's Dracula and it's, so it's a horror comedy. I don't know, that uh, kind of thing. And, but I, I, I watched it just on a whim yesterday. I was like, <laughs> this looks like a stupid movie. I'll just watch it and see how stupid it is. And I kind of found myself really liking the movie at the end. Um, I think the comedy works really well. I love Nicholas Holt. I think it's just, he, he really, carries a movie i've enjoyed him since warm bodies is a you know zombie comedy that i really romantic comedy really zombie romantic comedy and he stars in i thought he was really good in that movie and so i've always been kind of a big nicholas holt fan um definitely one of those actors anytime i see him in a movie he does a great really good job and i really i really enjoy him and so he definitely carries a movie very well as the main character at rainfield and i think very funny um, Nicolas Cage does a really great job as Dracula. He really hams it up. He's really going over the top, but it really works in this movie and it works for that character. And so I thought Nicolas Cage was great as kind of the villain character of, uh, of that. Uh, you also get Ben Schwartz, which I, I really like Ben Schwartz. He's such a funny uh, character. He's playing more of this villainous role, but still being funny, which was great. Of course, he's the voice of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog in the Sonic Hedgehog movies. And he's been in a lot of TV shows and stuff. I really like Ben Schwartz, so it was fun seeing him here. Uh, I would say um, Aquafina, like I'm not a big fan. I could have had it 
I think they could have, if they would have, could have casted her with someone better. That may have made the movie a little bit better. But you know, overall, it was fine. I mean, she was fine in it. But Nicholas Holton is Nicholas Cage were so good. The two Nicks, I guess, were so good in this movie that it really elevated the movie more than I thought. It is crazy violent. It's the most violent movie I saw this year. I would say, I mean, it was over the top violent too. You go, okay, this is so crazy over the top violent. It didn't bother me. I mean, people's limbs getting ripped off and blood just splattering everywhere. People blowing up. And it's just so much that it wasn't gross to me. It was just kind of almost comical how violent it was. And so, yeah, I actually find myself going, eh, I had a fun time with it. Uh, number five, best action movie. Well, this is another movie I just saw actually in the theater. This is the third movie I've seen so far this year in the theater. And I would say the best action movie is Mission Impossible 7, uh, Dead Reckoning Part 1, whatever you want to call it. I just saw this last Friday. Um, and yeah, it's not my favorite Mission Impossible movie. In fact, uh, I haven't done a review of this yet. I'll, I'll do more of a review in a, in a later date. But um, I would say it's probably in the middle for me as far as Mission Possibles go, since there's seven of them. I put this right in the fourth spot, like right in the middle. It's like, that's not nearly the worst, but it's not nearly the best. It's like right in there. Um, obviously there's some good action sequences. Um, I love the airport scene, the uh, <clears throat> chase scene in uh, Rome is really good. And then the uh, train sequence in Austria is also very good. And so based on those um, action sequences, I really liked, I didn't care for the story so much and the villain is, and I'll get to that in a later date. So there's definitely a lot of problems with the movie, but as far as the action sequences, yeah, it's it's good Mission Impossible action. Uh, number six, best horror movie. Well, I don't watch horror movies and I didn't see one this year. So that's one I'm gonna have to back out on and say, I don't <clears throat> really have an answer for that unless you wanna call it Renfield, a horror comedy. <laughs> Uh, maybe Renfield would be in that, but uh, yeah, that's all I can say about that. <clears throat> Number seven, best movie of the year. Now we get to my favorite movie of the year, and this is going to be a kind of surprising movie, a movie that you're not, you're like, what? And that is a movie called Jesus Resolution, um, which you might be thinking, I've never heard of that movie, or I haven't seen it. I don't know how many people have actually seen that movie. It's not a, a you know big blockbuster movie. It's a really smaller movie. Um, it's a faith-based movie, and as a Christian, um, I do enjoy a good faith-based movie from time to time, and I thought they did a really good job with this movie. It's based off of a true story of three different real, three different real people. It's about a spiritual revival that happens in Southern California, I think in the late 60s, early 70s, um, where we had a lot of hippies and had this big hippie movement, and then a bunch of hippies um, converted to Christianity and California and we and it covers this pastor named Chuck Smith who brings in the hippies because he believes that everybody should you know uh, learn about Jesus no matter who you are or how you look and some conservatives would be like oh don't let those long-haired you know long beard hippies in here but he uh, let the hippies into his church uh, kind of the leader of this hippie religious movement was a guy named Lonnie Frisbee and Lonnie Frisbee is a very charismatic uh, kind of leader and uh, speaker. Though he wasn't a pastor of any kind, he did do a lot of speaking in the church. And he brought in a lot of uh, hippies into Christianity. And he was and he brought a lot of people into Christianity. So he did a really good thing there. Uh, there's this really great scene where they're, uh, which is based off a true story. They, they would baptize people in the ocean, I think, um, in Southern California. There's this area, I forget, if there's a name for it, but it's like there's, there's these cliffs and there's an ocean, it's really beautiful. And they would bring people out there and they would baptize them and Lonnie Frisbee would be baptizing people. And so that was a really great moment. To me, I guess and I, I'm gonna go say, I liked the movie because of uh, how emotional I felt during the movie, because there's a lot of spiritual conversions, uh, Christianity conversions, which always make me emotional as a Christian to see people you know, decide to follow Christ, you know, that's always a very, you know, emotional point for me. So uh, I thought they did a really good job with that. So it, it, it's obviously, it's a lower budget movie. Uh, Kelsey Grammer plays uh, Chuck Smith. So he does a really good job. Uh, the guy who plays Lonnie Frisbee. Um, I always forget his name. Uh, it's like Rome, Romy or something like that. And he plays Jesus in the TV show, uh, The Chosen. 
And so he does a really good job. I thought his performance was really great as Lonnie Frisbee. Um, and so those two performances, really good. Uh, there's another character named Greg Laurie, I believe, who um, kind of is a hippie that converts to Christianity and later becomes a pastor. And he's today still a pastor of like one of the largest churches in America. And so they do go over his story as well of converting to Christianity and and getting direction in his life, you know, of course, and eventually, you know, becoming a pastor. Um, so, yeah, so all that, I really enjoyed the whole concept of the idea of like everybody deserves to learn about Jesus doesn't matter who you are what you look like you know you need to preach Jesus to everybody I love that concept and I love the concept of it doesn't matter how you who you are if you're a hippie if you're not a hippie uh, God will use you or if you're a sinner God can still use you even if you make some major sins or you struggle with your walk with God God still uses those people throughout the Bible that have major sins in their lives and uh, reaches people and brings people to Jesus. So I like that they really hit on that idea, I think. And they do talk about the gospel message, which sometimes I watch faith-based movies and they don't always talk about the gospel message because that's a little too controversial to talk about. So they'll go over it. But there's some moments where they really do talk about the gospel, which I really liked that they did in the movie anyway. So I guess this is definitely a personal movie for me where I felt very connected to it. Uh, it's not a perfect movie as far as you know dialogue and storytelling. But it's the most emotional I felt during a movie this year, so that's why it's number one for me. At number eight, what is the most underrated movie? And there's a couple of underrated movies this year. I'm gonna go with one that everybody hates and I really like, so to me that's the underrated one, and that is Ghosted, which is an Apple uh, movie starring Chris Evans and uh, uh, Anna de Armas. And it's kind of this, uh, you know, action movie, uh, somewhat romantic action comedy and and I love a good action comedy and I thought the, the action and the comedy worked really well in this movie so that's why I absolutely kind of really love this movie and it was my number one movie for a while uh, until recently uh, it kind of got uh, taken over by Jesus Revolution but everybody hates this movie everybody I talk to it gives this movie a half a star they're like this is the worst movie ever and the comedy doesn't work and all this and I'm like wow like I watched the movie and I laughed a lot I thought there's some really great moments, uh, some great, really good gags in there. I thought Chris Evans and Aunt Anna Armas had really good chemistry, and and they, they worked well together. And I, I just had a blast watching this movie. And the action sequences were really well done. And I, I a lot of people were like, "Oh, it's too CGI," but I was like, "I guess." But I still had a lot of fun with the action. I thought there's some good moments in there, and it ended on a good note. And and people were like, "Oh, they kept talking about the tax man," and I was like. That's a Beatle reference, and I love the, the song The Tax Man, and I love Beatles, so I'm like, I have no problem with them talking about The Tax Man, but everybody's like, oh, he talks about The Tax Man too much, and I was like, that didn't bother me at all. <laughs> I really like that, and I love the fact that they put The Tax Man song in the, in the movie, and some people really criticized the songs in the movies. I thought the songs were really great. I don't know. It's one that I don't know why. For some reason, I love the movie. Everybody hated it, but I'm going to put Ghost as my underrated movie of the year. Uh, number nine, uh, last question is, what's the most anticipated movie so far coming out? Well, as I said, the movies I was anticipating was John Wick Chapter 4, uh, Gardens of Galaxy 3, and um, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. Those were the only three movies I really was anticipating this year. Besides that, I really was like, I don't know. Most movies are not very good. It's very, it's very, There's very rare any good movies that come out nowadays and usually anytime I watch a movie and it's good I'm like surprised like wow someone figured out how to make a good movie I didn't know that was still possible uh so most movies I seem like I just absolutely despise uh so it's hard for me to really anticipate movies because in my in my mind I think if I anticipate if I go oh this movie the trailer looks good and then I'll go see the movie and it'd be terrible I'm like oh man I'm so disappointed and I, I hate being disappointed so I try not to disappoint myself too much but there's one movie I saw a trailer of recently that I thought looked pretty good, and that is Napoleon, which is uh, um, stars Joaquin Phoenix, who's an, one of my favorite actors working today. Absolutely amazing actor. And directed by Ridley Scott, who, not my favorite director, but he does some good stuff like Gladiator, um, The Martian. You know, he does some good stuff here and there. Um, I don't know. The trailer looked great, and I thought it looked interesting. Napoleon's a very interesting character, of course. One of the most, you know, a guy who 
took over uh, France as a general and then an emperor and had a lot of Napoleonic wars, you know, with England, I think. Uh, so there's definitely some, you know, interesting history there. And I like history. So the history aspect of it, the Joaquin Phoenix playing Napoleon, and it looks like it's shot really well. So there's a part of me that's like, ah, I almost want to go see that movie. We'll see. But yeah, that's the only one I'm really anticipating right now. Anyway, so those are the nine questions. So I'll put them in the descriptions and I hope some people carried on. And thanks a lot to Stephanie for the, I don't know if she came up with this idea or whatever. I saw her video on um, I'll probably buy the popcorn. But yeah, definitely would love to see people like Mike from Did You See That do this. Maybe Adam from What The Gym, Jacob Martin from Jacob Martin, Ryan from RWR Movies. Yeah, love to see you guys do it as well. Love to see what you say. Anyways, but that's all I got for this video. And thank you for watching it. Thank you for liking it. And thank you to all my subscribers for supporting the channel. I appreciate you all and hope you have a good day.